school in Los Angeles out to the 25. It's tackled by Brad Bell. Nine seconds remaining now in the third quarter. Looked like Colorado was going to let the clock go out at the end of the period, but they've got a player that's injured, and that stops it with nine seconds left. Naoli down in the field. He's got 58 points already, and that's the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl record. So a lot of records now starting to fall. Or fall, however you say it. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to see the sun yet today. Let's go downstairs now to Jackaroo. Well, you know, uh, Naoli was not slated to start this game, as you know, gentlemen. In fact, he was a late starter. And one of the main reasons was because his family is here. He's from Hawaii, and this was a chance to come home. But even more importantly, Chris Naoli's birthday is December 25th, 1971. Well, happy birthday to you, Chris. Hope you get better. Hope you're all right. That's a good story. He didn't just start, though, because, well, he did. Jack is exactly right. The point I was going to make is he was scheduled to share time, though, with Craig Anderson. So he was going to get a lot of playing time. They think so highly of him. Red shirt freshman. Got a bright future. The reindeer still at work. That's not a reindeer. 34 to 24. We'll return with more action from the GP Glamoha Bowl after this word from our ABC stations. After you shave, now there's comfort to the power of three. It's soothing edge aftershave with three soothing formulas for three specific skin types. An aloe formula that's alcohol-free to soothe sensitive skin. Extra moisturizers to soothe if your skin is dry. And a cool vitamin E splash for normal skin. Soothing better than ever with the power of three. Edge aftershave skin care for men. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. Leaving your job means deciding where to put your retirement distribution. Rolling it into an IRA is smart, but paying annual fees and mutual fund sales charges at the start can set you back. To put all your money to work, roll it into a Schwab No Annual Fee IRA. You can choose from over 200 mutual funds and pay no sales charges, and this performance guide is yours free when you open an account. So to make all your rollover money work for you. Maybe it's time to come to Schwab. Tony meets a Scrooge. She's a vagrant, Scally. She has to go. All she wants to do is find a place to sleep. Do your job. I quit. Saturday, it's the commish. Oh, hi, Vern. Just happened to drop by with your tools, huh? Yeah, Thelma called you again. Hand me that pot. What we got here is a loose pipe underneath here, if you know what I mean. Thelma said to call Vern's Plumbing at 228 Vern. Like I can get to the phone. Vern, I think I got a tool plug. Oh, burn! Ain't it a coincidence you're here? Could you at least tell Thelma that I helped you fix it? Next time, call Vern's Plumbing. We fix it right. That's no song and dance. I awoke from a daydream, so I guess I was never asleep. Something was building, and I'm not talking pothole construction. I never fix those. I'm talking burrito urge. Beans, cheese, chili, guacamole, and anything else you can pack into a tortilla before stuff falls over the edges onto my bobbly-headed dashboard dog. Moments later, I fulfilled my brazen hunger with those Taco Bell burritos. And with hot sauce dripping down my chin, I realized I was eating the dream. Cross it. This is KFSN-TV, Channel 30. One of the more scenic areas here in Honolulu. On the other side of Diamond Head, you've got Sandy Beach and Hanoama Bay. Some fantastic snorkeling, if you're into that. I had a chance to do that last season. Big family day out here this afternoon. After the start of the fourth quarter now, Colorado with the ball, first down and 10. Lamont Warren turning it upfield. Warren over midfield down to the 48 of Fresno State. A 26-yard pickup and a first down for the junior. It's amazing to me the success offensively that Colorado has had running the football. Watch Stewart now explode off this block by Hill and then cut back against the grain. Now it's like running downhill because he's going against the pursuit. 
You talked about their success running. They've only passed the ball 12 times. Cordell Stewart comes to the line. He counts. He reads the front eight. He calls the play to the side. He thinks he can outnumber you, overload, outblock you. So off that time, Tim, brought down by Gene Smith. Pardon me, scratch that. That's Lamont Warren. This quarter took a long time on the clock. Let's look at the third quarter statistics. Look at the 374 passing yards for Fresno State. And then the 182 yards jump out at you as uh, rushing for CU. Big thing, four turnovers. On the blitz. Bulldogs. A nice flanker screen. Michael Westbrook. He can make it happen after he catches it. Westbrook finally brought down at the five-yard line. Gave Tommy Jones a stiff arm, and Jones had to grab the back of his jersey and pull him down by the pads. Westbrook, the second leading receiver on this Colorado team, but he's most dangerous after he makes the reception, a 43-yard pickup. You know, last year he had 76 catches because he was what he calls the hot receiver on the blitz. Here they go underneath to him on the little flanker screen, tight. They take him outside, look at him move. Now watch the end of this. He gives a good stiff arm right here to Jones, and then Jones, with his left hand, pulls him down from the back of the uh, shoulder pads. Westbrook out of Detroit, Michigan. Here's Rashawn Salam cutting back and into the end zone. Touchdown, Buffaloes. It's amazing. Colorado, every time Fresno State gets close, Colorado just jams it down their throats. Rashawn Salam with another touchdown for Colorado, his second of the afternoon. Oh, what a threat. Westbrook and Johnson, they had 1,000 yards each last year. Only the fourth pair of college teammates who have 1,000 yards receiving. But with more balance and more runs, their numbers drop, but you can see the talent. Westbrook with that big game to set up that touchdown. Salam scoring 18 points. That ties a Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl record. Berger's extra point is good. And so far, Colorado's looking good. They lead 41 to 24. Werner Siemens opens his first factory and begins to manufacture the world's most advanced telegraph. That was then. This is now. Today, Siemens has 60 factories all across America, with over 15,000 manufacturing people turning out an astonishing variety of high-tech electronic and electrical products with quality American industry can count on. Siemens. Precision thinking. Oh, my back hurts, and I had a game this afternoon, so I'm taking Advil. More doctors recommend Advil by name to relieve back aches than any other brand. With Advil, a sore back won't keep me from swinging. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. I'm getting older, so I have to push myself just a little bit harder. Introducing a new, hard-working power stick. Now with more odor fighters per stroke than ever. Hey, that's better for me and everybody else. New power stick from Fabergé, the most powerful power stick ever. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Just help me this once, and I'll never ask for anything again, ever. On the count of three. One, two, three. <sighs> Next time, get a dependable interstate battery. We check them before you buy them for fresh power. Guaranteed. Undefeated West Virginia stakes its claim to the national title when they meet SEC champion Florida. It's the USF&G Insurance Sugar Bowl, New Year's Night on ABC. Just underway here in the fourth quarter, Colorado leading Fresno State 41-24. to I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brand and Jack Aroot. And a Merry Christmas from all of us at ABC, including many talented people behind the cameras that you never get a chance to see. Again, no return. Bring it out to the 20 and just get it in Trent Dilfer's hands. Mitch Berger's been a big weapon for Colorado today. Look at that scoring drive. Five plays, 80 yards, using up 149. And, of course, the big play was that Michael Westbrook catch and run. 
Now, I think Michael Westbrook will be back next year to play. He's come back and come out and said as much. And I, I tell you what, I think it's good for him, too. I think another year of college football will help him. Dilfer back to pass. Finds a receiver at the 35. That's Sebron, who steps out of bounds with a first down and a 15-yard pickup. Take a look at the scoring by quarters in the third quarter. Each team scoring 14 points. It's been an even ball game all the way through. Turnovers have made the big difference. Four by Fresno State. I know we've said that countless times, but it's because Colorado has scored almost every time they get one. And that's been the difference. Split back formation this time. Dilfer has it batted down at the line of scrimmage. Kerry Hicks was one of the front seven that got a big paw up there, knocked it down. Kerry Hicks, really an outstanding athlete at 6'6", 260 pounds, just a sophomore. Hicks was a great high school basketball player. And earlier in the week, actually Thursday, he had a 102-degree temperature. Yeah, that, that's something that went through both teams. Also went through our hotel and, and the ABC crew. And yours truly, right here. Yeah, a couple of my little ones had it while they were here. Three receivers out for Fresno State. Dilfer looking and looking, and good coverage that time in the secondary by Colorado. He fired incomplete for Sebron. And Dilfer ends up on his wall. Yeah, we got a little pushing and shoving going on here. That was a legal hit on Trent Dilfer. Now, Colorado is going to be very careful in this situation, Tim, because they instituted a team rule after that brawl in the Miami game that anyone that got involved with a fight was automatically suspended for a game. And that's exactly what happened to Dwayne Davis. He was the starting safety. He was suspended for fighting after the Iowa State game and did not make this trip. I'll tell you what, I don't blame that at all on Colorado. And Bill McCartney really putting his foot down after that Miami yeah, brawl. See, he's going to take Holland out and talk to him, but Holland did absolutely nothing wrong. He made a good tackle on Dilfer, and then the Fresno State guys came up and went face-to-face -face with him, but Holland kept his hands at his side. McCartney with words of advice to Holland. Third down and 10 for Fresno State. The flanker screen to Jones. Jones will lose two yards. Brought down by Ted Johnson. Number 46, a man who's been working the beach during the course of the week. Hey, Dilfer took another lick, too. He comes up a little bit shaky that time. So it's a fourth and 12 now for Fresno State. And Mahoney comes in to punt. Charles Johnson standing back at his own 24. Mahoney's been under a heavy rush most of the afternoon from the Buffaloes. Gets this one off, but it's not a great kick. Bounces at the 36. Johnson can't slide away and is brought down immediately. 38-yard punt, minus one on the return. We'll be back to Aloha Stadium after this. You know, there's something peculiar about car advertising. Everyone likes to show their cars driving through water. Well, here's something different. The Eagle Vision TSI. Sure, it handles beautifully in all kinds of conditions, thanks to its traction control and anti-lock brakes, but right now, we just want you to take a good look. And if you were wondering how this Eagle Vision looks when it's not underwater... <coughs> Jim Fansler's cold won't give him a minute's rest. But he's about to break free with an effervescent rush of relief. Alka-Seltzer Plus, nighttime. It speeds powerful medicines to free your breathing, relieve your runny nose, soothe your aches, and quiet your cough so you can rest, all without alcohol. Nothing rushes relief 
like Alka-Seltzer Plus Nighttime. There are many, many infants and young children who suffer from malnutrition. Children underweight, uh, possibly undersized. In this country, there's just no excuse for that kind of tragedy. We're grateful for American Express card members' support. Every time they use the card, they're not just going to be buying a meal or an airline ticket or an appliance or a CD player or what have you. They're going to be buying a little piece of the fight against hunger. You can help use the American Express card to join the charge against hunger till December 31st. Charles Johnson coming to you from Hawaii, University of Colorado Card and Wide Receiver. I'd like to say a special um, season greetings to Kala fans and to my sister Christine and Sonya and my mom. I'd like to say, um, Tanisha, I'm getting filmed out here on the beach. I'm not looking at none of these bikinis. We're relaxing. They woke me up today. Come out here and I want to let you know I'll be home tomorrow and I'll see all you guys when I get there. I love your season greetings today. <laughs> Trying to get his story straight before anybody even asked him. <laughs> Not looking at any bikinis. One of those things that make you go. Just sleep in my own business and ABC woke me up to make me work. That's how it happened. <laughs> Colorado with the ball. Stewart hands it off. Salam over the 30 out to the 33-yard line on first down and 10. Out halftime in San Francisco, the Oilers with a 10 to nothing lead. What a great story that is. Jack Pardee. I mean, they were talking about riding him out of Houston there when the season began. All of a sudden, they turned things around and started winning. Warren Moon benched earlier, comes yeah. back. Then a team with a lot of tragedy here in the last couple of weeks. They seem to pull together and become a tighter unit. Colorado Buffaloes out of the Big 8 looking for their fourth consecutive win. Salam over the left side this time. Brought down just shy of the 35 with the 34 by Brad Bell. Well, tomorrow, the biggest names from each of golf's tours go head-to-head -to, -head to find out which tour is tops in the Wendy's Three Tour Challenge. Greg Norman, Paul Azinger, and Lee Jansen head up the PGA team. From the senior tour, Jack Nicholas, Chichi Rodriguez, and Ray Floyd team up. And the LPGA is represented by Nancy Lopez, Lori Merton, and Patty Sheehan. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern, 2 Central, and Pacific tomorrow here on ABC Sports. Stewart on the option to the near side of the field. He's got lots of room. Cordell Stewart down to the 28 and a first down for Colorado. That play should have never even gained a yard. Chris Rockwell was there. He had quarterback responsibilities, had him wrapped up, and Cordell escapes. Cordell counts, sees he's got him outnumbered to this side. Now watch 98. Number one, he's held, but then he overruns the play, doesn't break down, doesn't take the inside-out route, and misses the tackle. Cordell just turns it loose before Jones can catch him. Big game by Cordell, but poor tackling continues for the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Ball at the 28-yard line now. Colorado with a total of 258 rushing yards today. That's another Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl record. Another option. This time he pitches to Salam. Salam is brought down at the 25. Brought down by Sam Watson, who, by the way, started his college career, his football career, right here in Hawaii with the Rainbows. Colorado is so tough offensively. I know they've had some inconsistencies defensively, but this is a defense Colorado's, which is ranked in the top 10 for the last nine years. Those inconsistencies had everybody a little bit concerned. Offensively, I don't think they've missed much. This is a club which had three losses this year, and losses by less than a touchdown each. So they look at this game as a way to get a little bit of retribution. They think that they're a better club and really should be playing in the Orange Bowl. Out of the eye this time, James Hill up the middle. Stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. This game very important, Tim, also in the respect that you want to build a little momentum headed towards next year. Well, and you know this offense has put 41 points on the board, can, continues to move, and is moving toward the end zone here again. And this offense has nine starters coming back next year. How impressive is that? I'll guarantee you, Colorado will be ranked in the top five in the preseason polls next year, and should be. They've got a pretty tough schedule to start things off next year, so they'll have to prove it. Rashawn Salam over the right side, down to the 20-yard line. 
about two yards shy of the first down. Getting back to Colorado, Tim, we're looking at Cordell Stewart this afternoon, but there's a backup quarterback for the Buffaloes with a familiar last name who's got some talent, Coy Detmer. Sure, Coy Detmer, uh, redshirted this year. We saw him come in and bring Colorado back in a couple games last year, and he won the games for them. They love this kid. As a matter of fact, he has been running the scout team and being the guy that uh, has been Trent Dilfer in practice. And they say, hey, the guy is so sharp, he's tearing us apart. But he will, uh, he definitely will put some pressure on Cordell Stewart in spring practice, and it just makes spring practice that much better. Salam front down at the 18, and he's right at the first down marker. They'll probably have to measure. Stoutmeyer in on the tackle, along with Andre Deshay for Fresno State. Again, Colorado just grinding it out on the ground. 8-13 to play here in the fourth quarter, and it's 41-24 for Colorado over Fresno State. And they didn't make it. So Fresno State takes over on downs. Jim Sweeney's team looking for that last gasp effort. Dangerous anytime this guy's on the field. 25 for 41 today, 374 yards and a touchdown. And here's a quarterback, Tim, who this year set 11 different school records. They trail by 17 right now, though, with 8.13 to play. for showing some good mobility. Incomplete, no flags, and yes, now one comes. Lee Harris was great and brought down by Dalton Simmons. I like that's a good call, too. Simmons actually hit his foot, which tripped him up. Certainly brought to the attention of the back judge by the sidelines of FSU. Watch this. Dilford does everything he can to get out of the pocket and buy some time wait for a receiver clearing now watch this and see if Simmons doesn't hit the back of his foot to take him down right here is that a catchable ball though Tim I think it is if he doesn't trip take another look and see if it's Simmons that actually makes him trip or whether he was stumbling anyway here comes Simmons now catching up behind and the ball right now is in the air now here comes Harris I didn't see him touch see him. I'm not sure he did touch him I didn't see Simmons touch him at all. Of course, the officials don't have the benefit of replay. Regardless, though, it's a first down at the 34-yard line for Fresno State. Hot down there on the sidelines. Time definitely a factor. 8.05 to go. No timeouts left for FSU. Complete to Christian, who's out to the 44-yard line and near another first down. See, these guys, Mark, have to start making some decisions. If they see that they're going to get tackled, they've got to get out of bounds and stop the clock. They've got to start thinking now about being curators of clock and actually manage that thing better than they are. Well, it is a first down. But that'll only stop it long enough to move the chains. All right, now the chains will set, the whistle will blow, and they'll get back, and the clock will start going again. David Dunn checking into the ball game. Charlie Jones coming out. Dunn has been one of the big keys for this Fresno State offense this afternoon. Moved him in as a tight end because all their tight ends were hurt. So they moved him to tight end and moved Sebron up. And he has really worse that position. But a play action by Dilfer under pressure and gets rid of it before being sacked. Sam Rogers was there. Wolfork was there. Darius Holland was there. It's like a block part. Look at a score from yesterday in college football. The Big Eight having a good day. Oklahoma defeating Texas Tech 41 to 10. Big day for Kale Gundy. He voted the game's MVP. Mm -hmm. 
7.29 to play in the fourth quarter. Winans split to the near side of the field. Winans is the intended target. That's got to be face guarded. And it is. Past interference once again. Maurice Enriquez is the culprit for Colorado. I don't know about face guarding, but it was definitely pass interference. Bumped him with the ball coming down. Never saw Enriquez turn around. Here's another look, Tim. Watch this. This ball was underthrown. Wine is now trying to adjust. He just bumps right into him and balls him. That's pass interference. See, there's no face guarding going on, really. Just it's a mauling. <laughs> Call it what you want. It's pass interference. We'd like to pause five seconds right now to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. At Aloha Stadium, I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brennan and Jack Aroot. The score, 41-24. Colorado out of the Big 8 leading the Wax Fresno State Bulldogs. Ron Rivers. Lots of room. Rivers out of bounds at the 13-yard line and a first down for the Bulldogs. Still plenty of time left for this offense. They're explosive. A 29-yard pickup for Ron Rivers, the senior. What a great call that time. Colorado looked as if it was coming on the blitz. Wolford came outside on one side. They bring the draw. They just kind of release him inside. Rivers picks up the big gainer. Here's a guy that had over 1,400 yards this year, all-conference set the Fresno State rushing record this season. Matter of fact, he's thrown. Marshall Falk is the WAC rushing champion. 14 carries, 36 yards for Rivers today. It's been a frustrating day, but it's a big play there and a nice call by Sweeney. Sal Mexico and Anthony Daigle out of the eye this time. Daigle going in motion. Flags down. Play clock yep. had expired again. Delay of game. Again. See, I blame that as much on Dilfer as I do the coaching staff. But in fairness to all of them, the play clocks here are difficult to see. The location is difficult. Look, I think Dilfer's complaining about it, too. Here's Dilfer's reaction. We said he was emotional and demonstrative. Well, he is. He's a heck of a competitor. I love the guy. They push the ball back to the 16. Dilfer reaching the 400-yard plateau passing. Looking to the wide side, into the end zone. Incomplete pick and intercepted by Enriquez. Enriquez vindicating himself for that pass interference call. First interception of Dilfer and 318 passes. That's a phenomenal record to throw it 318 times and not be picked off. This one's actually tipped. Ball's not poorly thrown, but it's great coverage. And here comes Enriquez, tip drill, bingo, got it. There's a problem with most dishwashers. No matter how hard you try, there's always something that doesn't quite fit in. Unless you have the new GE Profile dishwasher with smart rack design. Unlike the average dishwasher, you get over 20 different loading options that let you arrange pots, pans, and dishes with the greatest of ease. The GE Profile. Mom. A fitting end. No problem. To any meal. from the Sheraton Hotels that call Waikiki Beach home. The Sheraton Waikiki. The Royal Hawaiian. The Sheraton Moana Surfrider. The Sheraton Princess Kaiulani. Let Sheraton turn the world's most famous beach into your own tropical paradise. Come, celebrate aloha with Sheraton. For reservations, call 800-325-3535. As soon as the State Farm customer calls with a claim, I'm right on the phone to our claim center. We work as partners. Nancy gives me the information, then I contact our customer. 
We've settled hundreds of claims together. John's attitude is... You've got to be quick, and you've got to be fair. Quick and fair. At State Farm, teamwork is what it's all about. We make a great team. And like a good neighbor, State Farm... a wave and ride the old pipeline the north shore of hawaii is that tim brand out there or jack a root yeah could be how about that first interception in 319 attempts he had four interceptions coming into this game this season all four of those were in one game first down and ten for the buffaloes Rashawn Salah about two yards after running about 20. Ron Papazian making the tackle. Looks like he was tap dancing on the light bulb. Under seven minutes to play here in the ball game. 41 to 24. The Buffalo's leading. Bill McCartney looking for just his second bowl win ever. Yeah, but that first one he got was a doozy. That was a national title. Charles Johnson on the out pattern complete at the 28 yard line. He'll be a yard and a half short of the first down. He was covered closely by James Burton. There was a lot of concern after that flurry of suspensions and defections that left Colorado a little shorthanded as to how the team would respond. We've talked with them, spent a lot of time with them throughout the week. The team that has drawn together, I think, in the face of adversity. I think Bill McCartney's done an outstanding job. He was really loose with them over here. Gave a lot of time to themselves, a lot of free time, and they've responded very well. Packs out of the eye this time. Salam picking his way for the first down out to the 33. Salam. first down yardage. Colorado Buffaloes with a lot of success over the past decade. Bill McCartney, a big reason why. You know, I don't think that you'll find a head coach that is more sympathetic to the needs of the black athlete than this guy right here. We had a nice talk this week, and he sets up a lot of community programs in Boulder, sensitivity studies with the Boulder Police Department, and his players really have a lot of affection for him as well. We talked about Sweeney and his players, but McCartney is well-liked as well. Saw another Jeep Eagle, a low hop bowl record. The yards today. You know, looking at this Colorado running game, I think the offensive line is the most improved part of that football team. CU is 12th in the nation running the football. Last year the Buffs were 100th. That's a uh, remarkable turnaround. And I think a great credit has to go to that offensive line, led by big old Tony Birdie. And he's only a junior. Irwin's a sophomore. Stoltenberg's a sophomore. He always a freshman, and Derek West is a junior. So all those guys coming back. Yeah, Colorado every year, Tim, seems to, make, seems to make one adjustment to perfect that offense. And look at those rushing numbers, 275 to minus 8. Tribute to that offensive line. Didn't get it done that time, though. Rockwell making the tackle back at the 30-yard line on Cordell Stewart. Chris Rockwell on 98. Stewart, number one on Colorado's passing list. Number two in total offense. That's for 11 touchdowns and only had seven interceptions this year. You know what I think is impressive when looking at Cordell? As a starter at CU, his record now will go to 16-3-1. Tough to beat. Back to pass. Over the middle. And bounces it. Charles Johnson. I'll tell you something else about Cordell, too. He's really a, he's a, a neat little guy. He came up at the banquet the other night. It was the best of atmosphere and everything, and I got him by the door. You know, he apologized for his performance against Nebraska game we did out there. He said, I don't know what happened to me. I said, Cordell, you don't have to apologize to anybody. He says, well, I kind of struggled. I was in a different zone. It wasn't me out there. He says, I want to make up for that in this game. So, Cordell Stewart from Marrero, Louisiana. And I'm still trying to book a care appointment with him the team bar. You need to. <laughs> Get that fade tightened up a little bit. Mitch Berger into punt. 
end over end punt at the 35 yard line where Charlie Jones calls for the fair catch. New Year's Day keeps on going. It's a college football bowl triple header here on ABC. First Penn State tackles Tennessee in the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. Then in the Rose Bowl, Wisconsin makes its first trip to Pasadena in 31 years as they take on UCLA. Ladies and then, gentlemen, the finale, Florida against West Virginia in the USF&G Insurance Sugar Bowl. All New Year's Day right here on ABC. And Florida takes on West Virginia. That's going to be a nice one. Of course, you and I, Tim, will be down in Orlando. Get a look at Heath Schuler and the Tennessee Volunteers and Joe Pop, Penn State. Speculation about Schuler coming out as well. Take a lot of the backfield complete out to midfield at the 49. Pick up a 14 yards, but the clock is the Fresno State enemy right now. 4.18 to play. Simmons and Newts Knutson making the tackle. Trent Dilfer, will he or won't he come back? See these numbers now? These are impressive, 411 yards. They're impressive for Trent Dilfer. But the thing that's not impressive is the running attack for FSU, and that has been critical. You know that the, the Bulldogs are 8-0 when Rivers goes over 100 yards. Today, they're minus 8. That makes a difference. These two have to go hand-in-hand. -hand. Sure does. A credit, though, to the Colorado front seven. Dilfer sacked by Sam Rogers. The fourth sack of the afternoon for the Colorado defense. Back at the 38-yard line. You knew Sam Rogers was ready to play in this game. He's another one of the married players for Colorado. One of the few, actually. He's over here with his wife and his little boy. His son, Aaron, and his wife, Leslie. From Pontiac, Michigan. Defensive MVP on that team. Nine and a half sacks this year coming into this game. Still for the pass. Complete at the 39-yard line. Another catch for Lee Harris. He's had a great day. Gain of 22. Let's go downstairs to Jack Aruth. Well, Mark, Ted Johnson, one of the linebackers for Colorado, has had a terrific day. You know, he grew up in Iowa City, Iowa, but moved to Carlsbad, California, and said he called himself a Midwestern surfer because he said he decided he would take up surfing when he went to California. So we took him out here in Waikiki Bay. He says he's a Midwestern surfer. Oh, now we know why he's a Midwestern <laughs> surfer. <laughs> Looks like one of those guys in those old digit movies. Here's a pass complete to Anthony Tangle down to the 16. And another first down for Fresno State. The guy's a fraud, though, isn't no, he? No, he's not. <laughs> Ted Johnson walked away from that. He says, man, that's embarrassing. ABC's killing me. They're killing my reputation. Jim Ross making the tackle that time. That's going to be holding against uh, Fresno State. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat first down. It hasn't been the type of day that Jim Sweeney wanted it to be. Still not giving up yet. This team trailing by 17 points with three minutes to play now. To tag that story on Ted Johnson. After ABC did tape that, he went out and served the rest of the afternoon. Went out with Brian Cabral, one of the assistant coaches, who is the big kahuna. Not bad. Played for the Bears. Special teams captain. He went out. He was surfing like crazy. Daigle complete out of the backfield. Right down at the 44. Yeah, they've been surfing, boogie boarding, touring. I've seen a lot of the Fresno State and Colorado players on those little motor scooters. Driving around town in little posses. <laughs> they enjoyed themselves this week. 2.15 to play now. Dilfer completes to Jones. He laid that right in there, too. That ball was perfectly thrown. Again, caught him in the, in the zone and hit him in the seam down the sidelines. He'd rather be skiing. <laughs> Not. I don't think so. Harris checking into the game for Winans now. In comes 
against Malcolm Seabrook and Charlie Jones. I think Colorado accomplished almost everything it wanted to today. I think for Fresno State, it's going to be a huge disappointment. They thought this was a way to earn some credibility nationally going against Colorado. They really thought they could handle it, but they have struggled. Bilker throws it behind Ron Rivers. He got his hands on it, but he couldn't squeeze. <laughs> This game does accomplish one thing for both programs, the fact that it's a national telecast. Both programs and both coaches intimated to us that it was important for recruiting. The fact that both programs get a lot of exposure through this. Yeah, but the difficult thing for the coaches is when they do go to a bowl game, if in fact eventually there is a national championship, which will extend the season even longer, they lose recruiting time because they're tied up over here and don't have the time to go to the high schools and you know, meet the parents, that type of thing. Got to get on that phone and phone him from Hawaii. Daigle on the dive. Under two minutes to play now. Ted Johnson and Matt Russell making the tackle for Colorado. It's been a long football game. It's going on four hours now almost. Fresno State's had a few of those, though. They're no stranger to four-hour ball games. Daigle again. Breaks a couple of tackles down to the 10-yard line. Daigle, the all-time touchdown leader at Fresno State. At 34 coming into this game. Brian died and Matt Russell in on the tackle. 53 passing attempts today. That two ties in the Aloha Bowl record. Bill McCartney in line to notch his second bowl victory of his career. Bingo. A quick slant and a touchdown for Fresno State. That ball was perfectly thrown to Titus Winans. Winans was right there on the quick slant, and I mean that ball was right where it had to be. Let him, kept it low away from the DB. Oh, that was nice. Good timing. Just watch this. One, two, three, bam, let it fly. Here comes the slant, can't stop it. That's nice. Winans with his second touchdown reception of the day. Lining the ball up now in the left hash. Fresno State going for two. Winans, the fourth leading receiver in Fresno State history. Outstanding receiver. Reminds me of Henry Elliard. Elliard who played there. Elliard. That too. It's coming out. <laughs> Tried to force it in, and it's incomplete. Tried to find Daigle. Dilfer today had his streak of consecutive passes without an interception snapped by Enriquez. They trail by 11. My husband, the big football coach, well, sure he acts tough, but when he got the flu, I knew he felt it just like the rest of us. Body aches, fever, coughing. So I made sure that he got new Tylenol flu. Only new Tylenol flu has maximum strength medicines and extra strength Tylenol brand pain reliever to fight even your worst flu symptoms. Tylenol flu really got him back on his feet. Nothing fights the flu like new Tylenol flu. You know, he may be the coach on the field, but at home, I'm the team doctor. For everyone working to provide safe haven and a better life for those they love, there is an independent traveler's agent there to help protect what you've worked so hard to achieve. For everyone challenged by economic uncertainty, there is a traveler's agent there with a customized plan for your financial future. For everyone in America striving to safeguard a dream, there is a partner. Your independent traveler's agent. The Travelers, America's umbrella. This is an American car. The Eagle Vision TSI. A unique sports sedan with a 24-valve, 214-horsepower engine, speed-sensitive steering, traction control, even driver and front passenger airbags. And thanks to Eagle Vision, a lot of people who used to buy imports are now deciding to buy American. Now, if you could just do the same for that television you're watching. Tim, aloha is the easy word. I know you've been working hard all week, practicing, trying to say Happy New Year. You going to spit it out anytime soon? I'm saving it for the end. The man is a well of information. One of the 
great part about coming over here is learning a lot of the Hawaiian culture and traditions. Polynesian cultural center, really something to see. The onside kick, and Colorado says they have it. Mahoney got it to take a nice bounce. But the Buffaloes had their hands team up there. It was recovered by Danelle Liamitti. They've got it, and that'll just about do it. Number three, Danelle Liamitti. So, Aole Maki Iyo. Hey. Happy New Year. Good job, my man. The Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl most valuable players of the game are number 12, Trent Dilfer from Fresno State. His numbers, hold on. They're going to say Fresno State has this ball. Well, excuse me. Dilfer, though, 33 of 54 for a total of 476 yards, two interse one interception, and two touchdown passes, and three Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl records. For Colorado, Rashawn Salam. 22 rushes, 133 yards, and three touchdowns. Here's the onside kick again. Everybody in Colorado said they had it. They actually went off the field after talking to the officials. Fresno State stayed out there and lobbied. Right there, it does look like Colorado got it, but then the wrestling match underneath, and FSU got it. Let me reiterate, Dilfer and Salam, the respective MVPs, are checking the amount of $1,000 will be donated to, by Jeep Eagle to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students to advance their education in all chosen academic fields. Bill McCartney pleading his case right now. One nineteen to play. The Bulldogs trailing by 11. Cartney out on the field, still out on the field. They're trying to get him off. Headlines been saying, hey, come on, Bill. Let's finish this thing. Been out here four hours. Got a minute 19 to go in this game. Let's get it over with. McCartney's hot. Fresno State, though, no timeouts remaining. Looking to add to the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl record book. And it's incomplete. Stops the clock with a minute 12 to play. Ted Johnson right there on the coverage. Let me ask you this about Trent Dilfer, Tim. You've seen Heath Schuler. We've done Tennessee, Alabama this year. You've seen Charlie Ward. Of those three, who do you rate the top one? I'll tell you what, I like Trent Dilfer a lot. I also like uh, Heath Schuler a lot, and I think both will come out. Both are saving their announcements until after the bowls. I think both are coming out and turning pro. Dilfer to pass. Down to the 41 to Anthony Daigle out of the back. That is not to diminish the talents and the accomplishments of Charlie Ward, a guy I think a great deal of. The Heisman Trophy winner. Is he too small to play at the professional level? No, I think he can play anything he wants. He's one of the best athletes I've ever seen. He's a very intelligent guy. And he's a quality guy. Dilfer stepping up. To complete. Harris couldn't get out of bounds, though. Pardon me, Winans couldn't get out of bounds. Schuler and Dilfer will both go higher in the draft, though. They're the prototype, prototypes, really, at quarterback. I mean, this guy right here is built just like Marino. 230 pounds, six foot four. Heath Shoulder's a big guy. Forty-one seconds to play. He's about to go over 500 yards here. He's got 499 passing already. Incomplete. Stopping the clock with 37 seconds to go. There's a look at the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl trophy. at the 28. Harris and 
Dilfer overthrows him. Incomplete, intended for Lee Harris. Third down. Been a successful season, though, for Fresno State. We'll end up at eight and four. Colorado at eight, three, and one. Don't forget tomorrow, the three-tour challenge, Wendy's three-tour challenge, tomorrow at three Eastern, two Central, and Pacific. Hits Rivers out of the backfield. Rivers down to the 16. That should be a first down move the chains one more time. Stop the clock at 25 seconds. Dilfer now has just gone over 500 yards passing today. There's the 511. That's a Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl record. A pass complete to Harris five. to the five. He did well to hang on to that. Can't stop the clock, though, except to move the chains, so they'll do that. Nine seconds left, chains move. They got to get up in a hurry. This is just for stats now. Nothing wrong with stats. <laughs> Dilfer into the end zone, and it's broken up by Enriquez, the That'll freshman. Stop it with one second left, so they'll have one play left to try to score. Well, we anticipated a high-scoring game, and we certainly got that today with 71 points. The Bulldogs will depart for Fresno at 9 o'clock this evening. Colorado leaves tomorrow. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara. Coordinating producer of ABC's college football is Bob Goodrich, who also gave us great pictures directing today's game. Today's game produced by Jim Ressler. Our technical director, Larry McKeegan. Lanny McKeegan, pardon me. And it's incomplete. Associate Director, Jaime Bravo. Production Manager, Lynn Cadden. Technical Operations Manager, Mel Gerardin. Assistant to the producer, Brian Mobleson. And Brian Gordon. Our stat man, Roger Riley. Our spotter, Bill Breslin. Our sideline coordinator, Dick Shafter. The final score from Honolulu, 41 to 30, as Bill McCartney's trip back to Boulder will be very, very pleasant. For Jack Aroot and Tim Brent, I'm Mark Jones saying aloha from Honolulu. ABC Sports coverage of the 1993 Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Sheraton Hotels in Waikiki in celebration of Aloha. New Tylenol Flu, nothing fights the flu like Tylenol Flu. And Siemens for leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering depend on Siemens precision thinking. Monday night on ABC Sports, it's a key game in the race for the postseason. The defending AFC East champion Miami Dolphins are battling for a spot in this year's playoff pool. They invade San Diego to take on the Chargers live on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Promotional fee has been paid to ABC Sports by United Airlines. They can't speak, but still, they can tell us a 